Hey everybody, welcome to Leo's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. Happy Tuesday night. Okay, I'm hoping for the best here. I had this thing running last night. This is Gary's Mall 2MG that I've had for quite a long time. Uh, yeah, backstory. Uh, I don't know why or what happened, but the keyway for the the flywheel was just all torn out on this one. When Gary sent it in, uh, it took me a little while to source some parts. Uh, Getting it up with a full parts saw from TJ, and that worked out really well because I could uh, also use the bar from that for my 530N. So, anyway, like I say, I had this running last night. It's louder than shit. Let's see if it'll run tonight. This is an interesting saw to say the least. Got quite a few adjustments on the carburetor, more than what I'm used to. Uh, not sure, I don't know why I cannot get to this upper bleed screw for beans with it mounted in place there, but anyway, it is running. That much is obvious, and that's close. I'll tune it a little bit more, but it is running. And that's what counts. That's what really... Well, Gary and I talked about this when I found all the stuff that was wrong. He's like, well, I don't mind putting a little money into it, but I want the saw to run in the end. That makes perfect sense. So, you see if I can find all that old stuff here. I've had it laying around for months. What I ended up doing was the saw that I got from TJ ended up putting the entire engine assembly. Where the hell did I put that crankshaft? Just
just had it. I put that entire engine assembly and built Gary's saw back around it. I don't know what I did with it. Uh, but when I got it together, I couldn't get good fire out of the factory coil. So that's a story in and of itself. Those things... I got stuff spread everywhere. This is ridiculous. Here we go. Here's the old coil. So the way they did this was they just kind of etched out a little area of the, of the insulation here and then epoxied a lead onto it. Well, you can see this outer cover is just cracked to beat hell. Both coils were like that. One would give a really faint spark, and I mean faint. Uh, it wasn't enough. So I found an old thread on, I believe it was Arbor's site, might have been OPE, I can't remember, doesn't matter, but the guy that was on there had a great tip. He had taken the lamination out of that factory coil and then used a points coil from a uh, XL101, 102, 103 home light and that would fit in here on that ignition plate, so I did the same thing. Now, I kept trying to use the factory condenser and I wasn't satisfied with that spark, so I put a condenser from that same XL101 series in here and matched up and that got beautiful blue spark. I mean, we're talking beautiful spark at low RPM. So I went ahead and did that at the same time that I was changing this out. Uh, this ended up with low compression, the one that I, I got from TJ. The piston looks good, there's no scoring on it, and the rings actually still have a little bit of, uh, you know, they stick out, so I don't know why it had low low compression, but I was only getting about 108 PSI, which is on the low side of being able to run, so traded that out, and here we are. Now I can find the flywheel, and you guys can see down in there just how torn up that keyway is while well, the crankshaft was even worse so when Gary got the saw you go to pull the starter and of course this would just spin on the crankshaft and it's obvious that whatever happened it was catastrophic enough to just rip the crank and the, the flywheel to shreds so anyway replaced whatever other broken parts there were which wasn't many uh, got the, the muffler cover here actually good and warm but it's in pretty damn good shape most of the paint on the saw there's one of the old crankshaft bearings it actually came out of the race and came out like this I, from what I can tell online that's not uncommon for these things uh, the saw I got did have the MG tag on it so I was able to replace that and if you guys haven't seen these this is the a float type carburetor you can't turn this engine from side to side it won't run so you've got a rotating cutting head so if you needed to fall you just rotate it snap it back into place and away you go and when you're bucking obviously you want it straight up and down but this actually locks down until you until you release it so it's a pretty cool setup I will say that working on this saw was I'm not going to call it fun necessarily because uh, it's the first one I've worked on. So a little bit of, uh, well, I didn't want to waste a whole bunch of time and money that, you know, wouldn't do neither Gary nor I any good. But here we go. It's running. Gary, I'll tune this a little bit more. I hope you enjoy the video, and I really hope to have this saw heading your way very soon.